It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And this one features the Ravens. Lengthy corner. He got the QB not once, but twice last week with a pair of interceptions. It's the Ravens and the Titans. And it's all up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to one of the great cities of the world, London, England. Coming up, another installment of the NFL International Series, and it should be a great one, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, it's been a great week here in the English capital. And this is the final of our three London games for 2023. And these teams are so well received by a community here that has really, let's say, embraced the National Football League. In every way possible. And Brandon, when you think about where this whole thing started, the first London game in 2007, the Giants and the Dolphins, these fans are so educated now. When you walk into the stadium, you see jerseys from every NFL team represented, and they want to see good football as well. Except for what should be a tussle here in England, the Ravens and Titans underway from London. Well, from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here are the Titans now for their first drive. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him the win. On first and 10, it's Taylor. Flushed out right. That one into the hands of Hopkins downfield. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And even 20 yards and a first down on the game's very first play. But we know that he can get first downs with his arm and his legs, Charles. And there when he gets outside of the pocket, the defense has to account for both. And he's able to complete it for the first. And he's very comfortable outside of the pocket. Some quarterbacks, that's not their thing for him. That seems to be the number one asset to his game. Gets out into the open field, things seem to break down the secondary a little bit, and he picks out the right target. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. They keep it with Henry on first down. Shrugs him off, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. 12 carries, 114 yards. I think he's exactly where he wants to be coming into a game, partner, because he has to still be riding the momentum from last week when he broke the century mark in rushing and had one of his best individual efforts of the season. I would expect that there's more from him on the way after that type of a game. And I know his teammates and coaches, they feel exactly the same way. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 13-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much longer. And they've established a great balance so far, running, passing, doing what they want on offense. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 11 more on that one, and another first down. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Play action, now Taylor. 
Staying on his feet. Sliding out of the pocket. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Titans are on the board first here this afternoon. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there, that nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. Nick Folk for the point after. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now at his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And a short one there, caught by Lightly. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him the first down. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Jackson going to change things up a bit. Able to get away, eluding the pressure right. An unlucky number here, a loss of 13 on the play. And that's going to bring up a second of about a mile here. First carry now for Gus Edwards. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Well, this defense for the Titans, they were excellent a week ago in that victory over Indianapolis. And as in any game, takeaways are always a big key. They're always discussed on defense. There's an emphasis there. And they came away with three interceptions in that game. It fights him off. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Fielded at the 20. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. 
as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Now they entered play on a two-game win streak, and then they've got the open date on their schedule next week. So this is a group that's really looking to hit the break on a high note. And this will obviously be a tough game for them. But go ahead and play this out with me, partner. If they win here and make it three in a row, they get to heal up after that. You've got to think that's an ideal setup and a worthy goal to play for in this one. Second down in the yard. Now Taylor. Touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. The Titans at three and two, a game over 500 here to start the season, and they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victories. CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. And they run with Henry on first down, but nothing much materializing as he'll get forward only for about a yard. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm, but he was more than happy to dissect it with his legs for that first down pickup. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Yeah, boy, it is tough to bring him down that time. He surges forward. He's going to get a full six out of that. Second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second and four. Now they'll throw with Taylor. Escaping the pressure right. They'll hit Jackson complete. First target, first catch, and a first down. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Off the play fake, here's Taylor, rolling to his left. He gets it complete to Jackson. And he will be brought down with a first and goal coming up as we have come upon the two-minute warning. Taylor. Flush to his right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. A big loss there of about seven yards on first and goal. So now it's second down. Now Taylor. Flushed out right. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Now Taylor to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. And the 38-year-old vet able to split the uprights. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. 
Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. 19 yards there on the catch and run. That is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. Eluding the pressure right. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Trying to get something positive to happen here before the break, and they sure need it. They went for the big one, but it winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. On third down, Jackson rolling to his right. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Oh, that's well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here into week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Let's go now. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. Both these teams getting a chance to dry out, maybe change their cleats if need be, but halftime's just about over. Time to get back to it. And for the call of the second half, here's Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. This fielded right at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. And they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pack. And all the way in for the Ravens. Touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 71 yards. And the Ravens come right out of the locker room and 
score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd like Lamar Jackson, and really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all, but I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also electrifying us, and we're calling the game. This guy is simply sensational. Justin Tucker for the extra point. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Titans to take over on offense. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the gun, it's Taylor. Escaping the pressure right. Oh, a dangerous pass there, and it's in. Now he's hit on the return. It's a loose football. They'll call it luck or skill, whatever the case is. They're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now our ball. I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Tennessee getting the first down on a big play of 18 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Steps away to his left. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Now, this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Looking middle, and that's complete. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. They'll run. It's Henry. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. On their own side of the field, close to the 50, but their own side of the field, they only needed a couple of inches, and they were able to get it done. And it doesn't matter whether you're a zone-blocking team, a man-blocking team, gap-blocking, whatever you want to call it. When it's in this situation, it's really man-on-man, -man, isn't it? Who's going to win the battle? And right there, we saw, at the point of attack, find enough yardage to pick up a first down. Give them credit for that one. 23 yards on the play. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive.
Okay, great. A first down carry for Henry. And a pretty good pursuit there defensively. He's brought down, no gain on the play. Second down coming up. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him fight. And it's a Titans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Titans are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive. And now it's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. It's a foot race. And he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. Now you figure with a veteran kicker out there, these extra points almost automatic, but this one turns into two points the other way. And we both know it's hard to put it on him. I think there was a breakdown in the protection, but guess what? It does go against his record. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll start on the ground here on first down. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in London. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Bridges. And no luck at all to start this drive as they're going to drop him behind the line for a second straight play. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Yeah, he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Even though they were stopped before the first down marker, well-executed run there by the offense. It certainly was, and the best part about it, it opens up other plays, especially the play-action passing game. Because if you can sell the run, that brings the linebackers up, and you can throw over the top of them and in front of the safeties. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he'll take this up to the 38-yard line. If he writes a book in the offseason, he ought to title it Undaunted. Because where he is on the field, back on his own side, and goes for it and gets it, I got to give it to him on that one. Yeah, only thing you can justify it with is it was only a few inches that they needed. If it's fourth and two, probably doesn't do it. Hey, he got it. Give him credit. Yeah, but they don't pick it up. They're in trouble. Yeah, they're giving points <laughs> to the other team at that stage. 
A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. We definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. The first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. Yeah, it looks like just one yard there, so that'll bring up second and nine. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Finally held down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. From midfield now, here's Jackson, flush to his right. That's complete, it's Rashad Bateman. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a footer so short. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down, being chased out left. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Jackson, flushed out right. Touchdown! From 19 yards away. And the Ravens have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll roll him out right. And he's going to get into the end zone. The two-point conversion successful. And we've got ourselves a tie football game. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. It's a foot race. And he's going to take it all the way into the end zone. What a return. And they've taken the lead. And that score deserves our respect, deserves our excitement. But I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, there's a long way to go in this one. Ideally, they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off. Now on the other sideline, you start to get the crew together and say, this is what we practiced the two-minute drill for, right? Yeah, you hope you've been in that situation before, and if you haven't, you just have the confidence. Hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But, boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. Oh, this is blocked. Picked up by the offense. This is a live ball. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing... Not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by six, a minute eight to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Now Jackson. And he's caught Bateman. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Jackson to throw. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. They shakes him off. Eluding the pressure right. Bears it out toward the corner of the end zone. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out. Keep it. 
So a costly penalty yardage wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And once he got out of the pocket, you thought that maybe he'd take off with it, especially here in the two-minute drill. Sometimes defenses are focused so much downfield that there's room to run, but this time he decided to throw it unsuccessfully. Here's Jackson. Escaping the pressure right. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they stop him with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Here's a big one. It's fourth and goal. Throwing. Jackson dancing to his left. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. And the Titans have just about shown up this football game. Well, that puts a little bit of a wrinkle in their comeback bid. Yeah, everything had turned around for them, hadn't it? I mean, things were now going their way. But you did mention it's a wrinkle in their comeback bid. It's not the death knell for them by any stretch, but now they've got some extra work to do in order to climb all the way back. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. Little clock management 101. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. Breaks the tackle, now Allen. Derrick Henry all alone. He may go. And he goes diving to get as much as he can, following a big gain. A nice little cherry on top there at the end. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slot. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Were you hey, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust skeptical. it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for Tennessee, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And now it's off to Heathrow as they get set to fly back to the U.S. in a couple hours. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, the loss here will move them back to 500 at 3-3. Three and three. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.